welcome to the third saturday satsang on shirdi sai baba's uh, way of living his prominent devotees his uh, way of preaching dharma and uh, the way he continued throughout his life the modes of his modes of his living and the continuation of his dharma and his teachings in the, your lives thank you for coming the sai darbar in those days before 1918 october 15th as a different color it's called in several textbooks and research work done on shirdi baba like bv sri bv narsimha swami ji it says is a multicolored organization multicolored because the devotees it refers directly to the devotees the devotees who came there belong to several uh, communities men and women religious leaders swami ji's people who are done lots of uh, mantra tantra and then yoga teachers of uh, philosophical teachers engineering graduates professors psychologists economists and then simple housewives in those days they are no longer simple these days that's what you are thinking i never said that with education and cultural nuances the advancement of cultural nuances uh, men and women have become equal women in some areas like supreme court of united states are even better than men in some respects i'm not even talking about roe versus wade that's a reason topic that's meandering in your brains so the simple women shirdi folk who sang who were pounding the rice and then sang baba's glory is what i meant and i said the sai darbar let me read some of the things in the, the prominent visitors to sai darbar sai sachrita original some of you have chapter 32 verse 113 to 115 to this darbar of the saint shirdi baba came astrologers to pay their respects they would predict the future of men and women of importance the rich employing pleasures of life enjoying pleasures of life princes thus pressed of those pressed and affected by worldly cares turmoils desires of the mind desires of the body ascetics flocked eager for shirdi baba's darshan also came for his darshan those doing japa tapas vratham sanyasins pilgrims and those residing at holy places this i quoted from chapter 32 unfortunately no one recorded the history of whatever happened in this colorful sai darbar for several years in fact all the 50 or 60 years that he lived nobody has written except kapade's diary and the extensive research Kapadi's diary was written when he was even living there. The only next thing that we have is 1936. The extensive research done by Sri Sri B V Narasimha Swami ji, a famous lawyer from Salem, Tamil Nadu, a colleague of Sri Raja ji, the first Governor General of India, and then he was a very famous lawyer, like Dikshit, if you say, like pleaders that you come in such a rita. but for his research there is hardly anything there was no distinction uh, between uh, anybody who entered the sai darbar rich and poor good and the wicked healthy and the not so healthy the sick men and women even lo and behold dogs tiger lizards and then crows entered dwarakmai i am quoting directly from sacharita you know all the story in fact some of the people who recorded history a little bit like uh, the diary of uh, kaparde kaka sahib dikshit he was all great member of the legislative council of uh, bombay in those days mumbai these days and then dada sahib kaparde and then firoza mehta 
uh, it, was, it was a sir, Sir Firoza Mehta, and then Dada Sahib Kapade, I told you, and then a famous man, uh, Lokamanya Tilak, who fought for India's uh, independence, and Swami Sai Sharan Anand. Other people who came there were also equally important. Some of them were Professor G.G. Narke, Jyotindra Ramachandra Tarkad, R.B. Purandare, child Varalakshmi of uh, daughter of Mani, eight-year-old daughter of Mani from Kumbakonam, Tamil Nadu, and uh, Srimati Honorable Shivam Matai. These are all some of the people who are very, very famous, but there are hundreds and thousands of famous people who were living before 1918. What did they do? And uh, this uh, list also includes Anna Sahib Dabolkar, who wrote the Satcharita, and Das Ganu, who wrote the book and who, wrote, who lectured very extensively. It is because of Anna Sahib Dabolkar, Govind Raghunath, and also Das Ganu's lectures, these prime uh, movers of Shirdi Baba's uh, autobiography. Baba's name is known to us today. I already told you about Sri B.V. Narasimha Swami. In this um, analog of Shirdi Baba's life, approximately 18 years after the Samadhi of Shirdi Baba, carrying out a research of the kind of uh, books, four volumes and the three volumes of autobiographical and biographical such sketches of Sri B.V. Narasimha Swami, invites my attention. This research was very, very difficult. He traveled extensively in India. He didn't go abroad anywhere because those days the various devotees were in India, major majority of them were in India, one or two in England in those days, one or two in the United States in this country. So taking this research and then going and meeting with an interpreter, he didn't know, Sri Narasimha Swamiji didn't know Marathi. He was traveling extensively in Maharashtra and meeting all these people the interpreter had to interpret. And then at some point, while staying in Pune, he also happened to lose all the manuscripts completely. He prayed to Shirdi Baba, he prayed to Shirdi Baba and requested him to get back all the manuscripts. Lo and behold, it was mixed with, uh, he was staying with his source was a lawyer and it was mixed with the law files, the legal cases of which the lawyer had bundles and bundles in his, uh, like your closet. So it was mixed somewhere and therefore, next day when somebody, someone devotee went in and then uh, picked or in the dream, Baba came and told some devotee, Sri Narasimha Swamiji went and picked one uh, big fob folder and that was the folder he was looking for with all the interviews in English, Marathi and English. Such is the help prominent devotees were getting before 1918. And therefore, he could write devotees' experiences of Shirdi Baba, three volumes, you all know that, you have it, and the biography of Shirdi Baba in four volumes, you have it. Extraordinary research work. But then, in spite of all the research work, we still don't know the name of the parents, names of the parents of Shirdi Baba. He reportedly told Sri Mahal Sapati and Mahal Sapati reportedly, Shirdi Baba said when he told the names and he did the same thing. Mahal Sapati reportedly said the same thing to his son, who was his son, famous man, Martha and Mahal Sapati. He also said, don't tell anybody. So, Martha and Mahal Sapati also told his son, Honorable Joshi, several years ago we happened to meet him. Several, several years ago, he was already 1992. I don't know whether he is living now in Shirdi. So, we still don't know the real names. A geography states that there are some names given by Sri Sri Satya Sai Baba, as Ganga Bhavadiya and, you know, his wife's name, Boatman, and Boat, Boatman's wife. History aside, the names aside, there are, there are no definite information. Lo and behold, some people say he remained in the uh, Dwarakamai for 50 years. 
authentic authenticity says like uh, sri sri narsimha swami ji says he remained there for approximately 60 years 60 still 1918 october 15th whatever may be the truth lots and lots of miracles he started doing later on attracted the attention of so many people until 1991 92 i'm sorry 1891 92 excuse me 1891 92 baba was known in shirdi as a mad fakir he was just mad he was getting mad at everybody and he was uh, unhappy with the way people interfering with him when he was sitting down the neem tree and then trying to do his <coughs> tapas except baya jama and one more lady who said this uh, wonderful good looking lad who does not bother about heat or cold or rain or snow there was no snow in shirdi in those days neither today so he is sitting there and doing tapas he doesn't even worry about his kana lunch dinner breakfast coffee chai nothing a normal human being who goes to look at uh, him under the neem tree he was about 18 19 years old or probably 16 17 years old they all thought who is this lad this wonderful looking charming youth he doesn't seem to care about the bystanders or then uh, ongoing people such was the wonder and uh, until 1891 92 1891, when the local grocers refused to give him oil that was a diwali day on day before diwali he wanted to uh, you know get all the panatis he was very fond of the receptacles clay receptacles called the panatis the deepam kartike deepam as some of you know he was very fond and therefore all the uh, grocers including narayan theli and others all the five names i have but it's not necessary the narayan theli and others refused they just want to see fun like you know shirdi baba is a big gem uh, later on i'm going to tell you how many people three swamiji is uh, three great people in truly great people visited with him and said he is a gem today is not a gem but very soon you'll see we'll see that in the next two minutes so until 1891 he just uh, poured some water in his tumral and then uh, drank some and then uh, spit it some into the tumral and then he started filling all the panatees and then uh, lighted all the wicks they started burning and then throughout the night it burned and you all know and this was a first major miracle in fact that was the first miracle done by shirdi sai baba shirdi baba as i say and this invited the attention of the whole uh, village shirdi it was a very small hamlet shirdi in those days today some people told me visited recently it has become a from the airport you go in a car you find the rural shirdi and suddenly a board welcomes you welcome to shirdi city city the person who went there he came and told me uncle you never told shirdi has become a city if shirdi administrator say if ahmednagar collector shrimati bagisri she is the is officer there boss shrimati bagisri says it's a city it's a city don't question that welcome to shirdi city the arches they told me somebody is saying yes because they went recently so some small hamlet holy men and others the miracle attracted all the revenue officials from ahmednagar and one of the revenue officials was our uh, nana who rose from the position of a mamladdar to the rank of a deputy collector these days it is still possible a clerical staff as is retiring as deputy collector at least no one in uh, a city in india and then so many people uh, were astounded and uh, but in the initial stages of 1873 before 1891 who were all the people who went and saw him this was the times when he was known as i told you as a mad fakir bahut gusse se baat karte the anybody goes there he'll get angry immediately as later on he did he must have and put the shirt on flame i mean actually the topi on flame you know all that story there are several stories i am not going to touch just hint but then he was also acting very uh, weird is not a the same baba should forgive me he was acting very this is united states right acting funny 
right? And then he was acting very, very. This thing he will uh, say all sorts of monosyllables. He will say something in front of the dhoni. People won't understand what is he is saying. Under these uh, circumstances, who went in 1873? One such holy man who met him as Ramananda Bidkar Maharaj of Pune. We will call him Bidkar Maharaj. He is known as Bidkar Maharaj. This Bidkar Maharaj was a disciple of Akalkot Maharaj. Akalkot Maharaj is very famous, right? In fact, in the lineage of uh, Dattraya, one of the four who came after, including Sri Charana, Narasimha Saraswati, Shirdi Baba, before that, Akalkot Maharaj. That's what all the scriptures say. So, one of the <coughs> disciples of this Bidge Maharaj was K.K. Garde. He was a sub-judge in Pune in those days, very, very powerful people, sub-judge and solicitors and pleaders. So he was a sub-judge and then uh, Bidgar Maharaj, he says, May 1936, he had told this uh, Mr. Kashinath Gadkar that he had met with Shirdi Baba in uh, 1873, exact year is 1873. This is before, when he was considered uh, a mad fakir, right? So people came to see mad fakir. Because people knew him to be a yeah, diamond. This is a diamond out of a molehill, right? Of a garbage mound. Boas word, right? All those things I'll tell you later. So he said in 1873, but then he met with Shirdi Baba, there is absolutely no record. Nobody maintained a diary in those days, like uh, our Kapade Sahab, our Dikshit. Nice diaries. Do you maintain diaries of going to Shirdi? At least uh, two, three persons here are saying yes. What time you went? You went to the airport, the small airport, who welcomed you. When you go to the airport, the person who went recently told me, Shirdi Baba's picture is there, he is doing this. When you go into the big, small airport, that person described it looks more like a big gudon. But then inside the gudon is customs officers and, uh, you know, India's security people and then policemen and then the flight, you know, people who go to the, one of the thousands of hundreds of hotels from the Indigo flights. We'll call it Indigo because most of them go there to Shirdi. Therefore, Baba is welcoming you. Another holy man who visited Shirdi Baba was Anandanath Maharaj. He was also a very prominent devotee of Akalkot Maharaj. He met with him in 1885, in 1873 to 1885. He was seen, he was in Malegaon or some place, Neemgaon, Malegaon, all surrounding villages in those days, revenue district of Ahmadnagar. He was, who was staying there? Shama and Nandra Marwadi, who refused to tell later, 20 years later, 10 years later. He was there with Shama, friendly. So they were there, they went to see, Baba was still not popular, he was a mad, mad person, therefore even Shama went to see this person, Anandanath Maharaj in 1885. When he went, went and met there, all the three came back to see the mad fakir. When they saw the mad kafir, fakir, Anandan Maharaj remarked to Madhavra Deshpande alias Shama. He said, here is a diamond on a dunghill. He is the one who said that. Ramanand, I mean Anandanath Maharaj, who said that. He said, diamond is a true diamond. However, it is not known to anybody. That is the most important thing you should know. You meet with some great people. For a very long time, you wouldn't know who he is or who she is. It happened to Shiva Matai of uh, near Coimbatore in South India, Tamil Nadu. It happened to her. For a long time, until she was visiting several times Shirdi, until Shirdi Baba took her personally to the well and did the Kanda Yoga and then uh, took out the Intestine. Until then, she, or she also thought, oh, this is a mad fakir. See miracles and then you started following somebody, right? Even, even today, somebody is lecturing, somebody is doing something, there are devotees here. Somebody's home, Baba comes out of the picture, jumps out and then say, why don't you go and sleep in the bedroom? Why are you sleeping in front of me? Or in California, when the directors of a temple are looking at the picture of the uh, Prabhupada in a famous city. They were looking and then they didn't believe Shirdi Baba's statue was 
real is living they didn't believe four four to eight and seven directors were seeing one of the directors came to my uh, one of the lectures there and therefore this is several years ago and suddenly during the lecture shirdi baba was shaking and then he took all the dress out and then he looked in the marble he even took all the garlands with only one necklace and one garland he appeared he was shaking and the directors were watching they were also shaking in utter disbelief then they thought oh somebody was lecturing they had forgotten me i was an honorary i was not known right even today i am not known at all i am just a simple servant of shirdi baba I was trying to expound over shirdi baba and then give some religious spiritual guidance to all the devotees who were sitting here that happened so until that happened people didn't know who was really shirdi baba so until he does a miracle in your life pans getting a promotion a bonus of 25000 dollars whereas all the colleagues are getting only 500 1000 just a pittance you get 25000 dollars mama that's a great uh, honor to receive that is all due to baba's grace your blessings they say i say his blessings i correct them and therefore anandnar maharaj said he said it is not a flint it's a real, it's a real diamond he also told shama mark my words carefully for you will recall them one day and shama later on recalled i am not getting into that chapter of such charitha he recalled and oh long ago anand maharaj said that and therefore 1885 to 1896 we will come to ganga bhai bua this bua putambe is coming from putambe after meeting shirdi baba said shirdi is very he didn't say diamond it's not a flint he said came to the brack sacks of shirdi soil shirdi soil is very lucky shirdi people are extremely fortunate to have this sai he said he is a gem gem stones are as good as diamonds right as far as i know he is a gem and therefore no is no ordinary person blessed is the soil of shirdi in which he had set his foot later on baba said the same thing though so set their feet in the dwarakamai you will forget all your worries your life will be blessed your life will become blissful i didn't say that shirdi baba said that right it is there in sacharita and 1896 i have brought you from about 25 30 years to 1896 and i told you several several revenue officers of the government of bombay was drawn one of them was nana nana chandorkar are you all right okay nana chandorkar he was a very staunch devotee later on as a result who came because of nana chandorkar ganesh dattatreya sahasra buddhe the old original name is das ganu who crossed one century 100 year he lived to be 103 years old is it not a blessing of shirdi baba some devotees come to me and say mama i don't want to live even 90 80 is enough but if you are a true devotee like i would like to do the satsang for 150 years right let somebody one of you great devotees clone me right if you clone me i'll be cloning and then i'll be sitting and a cloned lecture if you will so that i can have enough time more time to talk about shirdi baba there is so much to talk about shirdi baba people who visit shirdi they come and tell me so much we met that person this person oh that person was very nice the shirdi uh, the shirdi the singer the, the arathis they are not very loud the recent rules the collector of amman nagar has made some changes you know the changes loud speaker and all that i won't get into that that became a counter now solved by that uh, very nice collector of amman nagar district she comes into every controversy and uh, resolves it beautifully that's what i am told by visitor to shirdi about shrimati respected shrimati bagyeshri ias so we need more such people in india don't you think 1896 he brought das ganu and dikshit hari sita ram dikshit known as kaka so we'll call das ganu and kaka baba's fame spread as a result of 
these two persons. The hurricane lectures, the tornado, tornadic, if you will, that's an adjective, this doesn't exist. The tornadic lectures of Dasuganu, and then the devotion, extraordinary, exemplary, very classic, exceptional devotion of Kaka. Harisita Ramdiksha, these two were responsible for bringing his name, even unto this day. But for those two people and Sri B.V. Narasimha Swami, we wouldn't be sitting here and talking about Shirdi Baba. There would be temple, one temple in DFW, thanks to great devotees who are sitting here who started the temple. One of the original builders is sitting here, I am very proud of him and his wife. Because they built Shirdi Baba temple and then he was responsible for uh, even beginning of my satsang long, long ago, he is the one who mooted the idea. I'm very grateful to him. Because we, I'm able to, he, he arranged, he showed me the road to do these satsangs and bring out uh, the best in human beings because of Shirdi Baba's Leelas. So I think of the such devotees every day, every moment. And therefore I'm talking about Das Ganu. And what happened in these times? Baba is becoming more popular. What would have happened in... Uh, on March 10, we are jumping to 1911-1911. You may not have heard, he is doing service. Very nice, like Das Ganu and Shama. March 10th, happens to be somebody's birthday. March 9th and 10th, 1911, at about 7 a.m. Dikshit, you know the birthday. Dikshit and Shama, they went to Bombay. When they left for Bombay, they just stepped out of the masjid. Remember the date, 1911. We have come far, right? We have come a long way, devotees. Baba suddenly raised his kafni and said, Baba raised his kafni and said, he, he, he meant something. He said, somebody is going to come and see me. What do I have? Somebody is going to, that's what he said. He lifted his kafni and said, somebody is going to come. I'm a naked fakir. I have organs in front and back. He said it in Marathi. Exact translation. And therefore, what is that? Uh, what is that they are going to gain? He said that and the people who are sitting in the masjid didn't know. What is this man? Oh, he was once upon a time. This was a mad fakir. So he suddenly mood swings. You know, these days people will think he was suffering from mood swings. Some doctors will think, was he suffering from bipolar? No, 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 no. Baba never had bipolar. <laughs> he was never subscribed, prescribed any lactomin tablets to adjust the mood swings. You know, that's some, some, don't worry about the medical things. Some devotee called me and said that. So hearing the words, there was no stranger present in the Shirdi devotees, I mean Shirdi masjid at the time. So people were wondering even more, something must be even more uh, queer about this. He's even lifting his cough and he's, he's saying, I'm a naked, naked fakir. After about uh, 15, 16 or 15, 18 minutes, there came Mr. Curtis. Mr. Curtis, his first name, George. Mr. George Curtis, he was the English commissioner for the Central Division of India. He came there along with his wife, Mrs. Curtis, along with his... Uh, Indian assistant, because they are all living in India and therefore they need an assistant to move around. And usually the English sahabs used to have that. Here, Joglaker was there. Joglaker was standing there and then the fourth person who was there was the Ahmad Nagar, equivalent of Mrs. Bagisri, IAS these days. There, in those days, Mr. McLean. He was not an IAS. In those days, we never had IAS. He was an administrator appointed by the commissioner or uh, the viceroy of India in uh, New Delhi in those days, right, 1911. So these four people are coming and then they crossed Dwarakamai Masjid. When they were crossing, the Kulkarni, the village Kulkarni, it's not a name, village chief, one of the chiefs saw and then he was a little bit flustered. Oh my God, these white sahabs, as they say in the book, let me repeat, white sahabs. They, he was looking at them with great concern. Baba never had any concern of whatsoever nature. He was looking at them. They were all passing into the Shavadi, next building. In between is only Anuman Mandir, as you know. He goes to the Shavadi. And then by the time he goes to the Shavadi, Kulkarni sends for some people. Shama was there in the masjid, but he didn't worry about it. He was looking, taking care of. Shri Baba, 1911, remember? It's not 1873. 
and then three chairs were bought and joglekar who happened to be a rao bahadur in those days the british people gave this title the only famous people get it very famous people with some achievement to their credit so rao bahadur joglekar was made to stand and the three chairs were arranged he because they got flustered and joglekar was wondering okay i don't have a chair but that's all right so in front of shirdi baba is sitting there in the masjid in the shawadi these people were there and then there was another devotee sahasra buddhe who was there so when sahasra buddhe saw joglekar standing there joglekar was famous uh, even in shirdi circle in those days because he was a very great devotee of all the swami ji's and big uh, people who were attached to gods and goddesses and therefore joglekar he called sahasra buddhe and said please ask bala sahib bate bate was a great devotee of shirdi baba bate was living in shirdi at the time very close to shirdi baba even in those days so he sent word ask bate to come and then see our uh, uh, sahibs are here white sahibs are there our officers are here commissioner is there in those days commissioner is it's a very big person next to viceroy so he sent word to bate bate said i cannot come now he sent it along with a messenger so the messenger came and talked to sahasra buddhe to make a long story short sahasra buddhe told the messenger go and tell mr joglekar who is assistant right hand person of the commissioner mr george curtis and therefore go and tell him to meet all of us in a particular home okay the particular home is uh, i forgot the name i'll tell you so you come to that particular home he said and therefore they all met in that particular home and uh, <coughs> they were all asking the white sahibs were asking what is this uh, shirdi baba doing what is his wish how does he start a day does he take chai baba used to make coffee in one of the lectures i told you how he used to make coffee some of them even tried some of the devotees sent an email we tried that coffee it is really good but then the recipe was not given by shirdi baba not even to mahal sapati or shama and therefore they were asking what does he drink why is he going out how does he eat all these things so all of them wanted they were very eager you know all these things were uh, flaming their heart and then they wanted to uh, see and then they were waiting including mrs curtis the reason mrs curtis wanted to see baba was after about several years of wedding she didn't have an issue an issue in those days i was explaining to my daughter in those days were not children issue in india means children they were asking what kind of an issue they had <laughs> issue with shirdi baba no, I, i explained that's natural for an uh, for, for people in this country yeah, your son will ask the same thing issue you had several issues with shirdi baba no 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 she didn't have an issue a child and therefore she thought we could wait in the, in the steps so they were waiting there and shirdi baba half an hour it took for the morning uh, washing and all that somebody will give a lot of a tum tumbler of so he was coming out of the masjid when he came out of the masjid in a few steps he crossed he's a very tall person he looks easily 61 but he was only 58 he was sauntering down pretty fast he reached chavadi before he reached chavadi mrs curtis came down and said aapse kuch baat karni hai i wish to speak to you something same word aapke sath kuch baat करने की है सेम वर्ड शी सेड इन हिंदी मराठी ईस्ट हिंदी करने की है एंड बाबा सेड आधा घंटे तैर जाओ टहर जाओ मीन्स इन हिंदी इज टहर जाओ आधा घंटे टहर जाओ मीन्स वेट फॉर हाफ एन आवर बिकॉज ही वॉज गोइंग ऑन द राउंड सो ही वेंट ऑन राउंड से टू गिट नॉर्मली मिस्टर कर्टिस कमीशन वॉज लुकिंग एट शेरडी बाबा ही वॉज जस्ट लुकिंग एट इज वाइफ टॉकिंग very respectfully she approached her extremely respectfully she did that and then okay half an hour somebody said half an hour ke baad and then they were waiting there is nothing they could do in shirdi it was not a city then it was just a hamlet a few streets and therefore they chose to wait he came after half an hour half, half an hour he came baba was coming there and she again very respectfully approached and said it's the same thing i would like to talk with you something would you please give me you know some time baba said ek ghante tar jao wait for one hour after saying that he didn't wait for any reper i mean any reply or any uh, sequel any expressions he just went into the masjid baba need not wait for anything so he went into the masjid again once again he minded his business he was sat in front of the duni 
and then these white sahibs they thought aadha gante and one hour i don't think we'll be meeting there is nothing we can do nobody to see in this shirdi village and therefore they were starting to leave before leaving mr curtis gave a 5 rupee note yeah 5 rupee indian rupee bill to shastra buddhe i already told you shastra buddhe shastra buddhe for distributing to the poor but shastra buddhe said if you really want to help poor people in shirdi you have to talk to the kulkarni the village head kulkarni means village head and then i cannot give this money to shirdi baba because shirdi baba if you want to give any dakshina you have to give personally to him if he wants if he doesn't want he will give it to you back which is what going to happen in the next uh, 10 seconds so collector mcclean also gave rupees 5 and then curtis said okay aap jo bhi karna chahte hain whatever you think is proper please do he told shastra budde and left after handing over 5 rupees only mcclean collector of ahmednagar district gave another 5 rupees 10 ho gaya jo lekar handed over another 2 rupees 2 rupya and therefore it added to 12 rupees these 12 rupees they all left about 10 minutes within 10 minutes shastra buddhe sent the 12 rupees to shirdi baba is still sitting inside and he could see shastra buddhe coming he gave it to him baba just returned the money he didn't say anything just returned the money to him our shastra buddhe being a very great devotee like you know all of you are he just went there and gave the 12 rupees again because great devotees baba might get angry he was aware of that baba might even kick him out of the masjid he has done it with one or two persons in those uh, years so when he said that baba got it and then gave it to a poor man who was uh, passing by a poor man he called hey idhar aao le lo 12 rupees 12 rupees you take it in those days a poor man getting uh, one kalana one quarter of an ana One rupee had sixteen rupees, sixteen anas. Am I right? Sixteen anas in those days. I was a child in those days. So sixteen anas and one ana had four. Some of them had a hole. That is the kal ana. They say quarter ana that Baba was given in front of the theater. Anybody remembering the theater's name in Mumbai? Okay, you don't know. I have said that several times. That's all right. You don't see films in uh, Mumbai. <laughs> you see films here. AMC. collection of 14 theaters right so it's all right so that is the same jyotin ramachandra tarkad as a boy from his personal money spending money given by his father gave it to shirdi baba therefore just a reference and therefore two hours later after sahab so everybody left there was aarti time at that aarti time shastra buddha and all others famous devotees about 10 15 19 11 they all went into masjid when they went to the masjid ha uh, baba called shastra budde idhar aao bhai bao idhar aao brother he said give me the 30 rupees he commanded give me the 30 rupees which the white sahab he referred to them as uh, white sahabs gave you 30 rupees he gave it to me shastra budde was non plussed he said what 30 rupees deva they said salute and they touch their feet because if you say something against his wishes he might get angry angry means match box sometimes <laughs> sometimes only right other babas babas anger will, will you can talk for hours together anyway that is not a real anger that's a blessing and therefore hand over 30 rupees means as rubde uh, explained that he had gotten the whole amount that they gave rupees 12 received by him but if baba so wished if you so wish i can uh, i have 12 rupees here so 18 plus 12 will become 30 to which baba got us some slight anger some signs of anger peripheral anger <laughs> we'll call it he said i don't want your money keep your money i know you have money give only the money given to me by white sahabs the three people gave curtis mrs curtis and five fly mclean mr mclean and joglekar joglekar ko chhod diya so he was wondering what to do and uh, he was so confused he wrote a small communication there was no texting in those days okay he wrote a communication asked baba आप जरा वेट कीजिए दो तीन दिन टू थ्री डेज यू वेट यू रोट अ कम्युनिकेशन एज टू वॉट एपन बिटवीन मिस्टर एंड मिसेस कर्डिस द कमिश्नर एंड मिसेस कमिश्नर एंड देन कर्ड इज रोट अ वेरी बिग रिप्लाई बिकॉज इट्स वॉन्टेड बाई शिरडी बाबा एंड देर फोर आफ्टर द रिप्लाई केम दो तीन दिन के बाद आफ्टर टू थ्री डेज ई टोल्ड बाबा बाबा दिस इज हाउ दिस थिंग हैपन्ड एंड बाबा एक्सप्लेन टू हिम 
actually, Mr. and Mrs. Curtis, when they came to Shirdi before that, they were talking about Dakshina. Because you are coming to see a saint or, you know, you go to a church, you have to put one rupee, two rupees in those days. And uh, he was a very rich fellow. He was a commissioner getting a very huge salary. And therefore, the talk was, Mr. Curtis wanted to give one rupee to Shirdi Baba when he came. Mrs. Curtis said, a woman who had a motherly love, is a great man, he said, for your status, for your salary, for your standing in society, in the political arena, you should give at least 25 rupees to this great saint. He's a very popular saint because she was coming to get an issue, right? A child, a child. And therefore he said this, therefore that made 25 rupees. And then Mr. McLean gave 5 rupees. Baba said, that makes it 25 plus 5. Baba said, you do the math. He didn't say that. That's here in this country. I don't know. The professor will turn around and say, 25 plus 5. You do the math, I don't know. <laughs> 30 rupees. Swahasra Buddha thought Baba was testing Mrs. Curtis. In any case, Mrs. Curtis never had an issue with Shirdi Baba. I mean, issue in our American, our English sense. Never had a child. Because Baba said she didn't show enough interest. She could not convince her husband to give 25 rupees. Failed, only 5 rupees came. And uh, surprisingly, because Mr. Curtis offered 5 rupees, he was promoted within two months to the position of the governor's executive council. He became vice president. That is referred in our literature. Mr. Curtis, even though very hesitatingly looking at his wife's face, disapproval, and all that, he gave five rupees. One rupee became five rupees. In those days, five rupees is enormous money because Shama was getting only three rupees salary for one month's teaching job next to the masjid. He was teaching next to the masjid, only one window, right? Old hut. Three rupees per month. A rent was probably quarter anna. Rice was available for one anna for one year. So three rupees is a lot of money, like you are getting. Uh, $100,000 per month. I'm talking about IT people. Okay? <laughs> Not even doc. Forgive me, doctors. <laughs> IT people make $100,000 per month because that is how IT is bursting at the seams, de developments. Let's go back to our IT area, Satcharita. And therefore, these uh, extraordinary experiences of these so many people in those days, this happened to be the first story. Okay? Like the Government officials came, and then uh, lots of people came. Suddenly, a lady came from the princely family of Gaikwads. Gaikwads were ruling in from Baroda, the current city of Baroda. The lady brought uh, two plates. One is full of guineas, gold, gold coins. Another is full of silver coins. Silver coins approved by the government of India in those days to be the uh, means of exchange for money. You can buy grocery and other stuff. So for two plates, he she came and then very respectfully, very leading uh, lady of the Gujarat uh, prince, princely family. And therefore she offered both to Shirdi Baba. Shirdi Baba said, we do not accept all this money from anybody. Fakiri is better than riches. So therefore I won't accept anything. So she turned around and looked at Mahal Sapati. Mahal Sapati was eyeing those two plates. Oh, at least one plate, one coin will make me rich. And he was looking and then she offered the plates with the gold coins, guineas. Baba said, no, this is not for us. Malsa, that's how I used to call it. Right? Malsa, this is not for us. And therefore Malsa just kept quiet. He didn't look at that and therefore went away. Shama didn't even look at that. He knew Shirdi Baba's face, right? If anybody accepted, what would happen? <laughs> okay, so people knew Shirdi Baba very well. The, you know, the supposedly the negative side, he never had a negative side, but then people thought, you know, he was a mad fakir. And therefore, Malsapati declined the offer. But then, who are all the prominent visitors to Sai Darbar, right? I'm talking about Sai Darbar. Who are all the famous people? I told you, Professor Narke, Jyotindra, Oh, how famous. R.B. Purandare. Oh my God, lots of stories I have told. Child Varalakshmi, who got to speak at the age of nine, when she said, Shirdi Baba. Who asked her to say, Das Ganu, 1942. 
when she went with uh, Sri, 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 Sri Mani of Kumbhaka, Kumbhaka, Kumbhakonam, sorry. Child Vara Lakshmi and the Honorable Shivamathai. I am not getting into the story. But then, there was this rich devotee from Nagpur, Bhuti. Bhuti Sahab was very rich, but we are not going to say one akshar about Bhuti Sahab. You all know much better than me. Bhuti Sahab used to develop culture. He used to always uh, support lots of artists, lots of uh, doctors, painters, lots of singers, right? Because that was, he had millions and millions of rupees, that's why he built the Bhuti Vada, which ultimately became today's Samadhi Mandir. And therefore, Bhuti Sahab, as I told you, was supporting so many people. In those days, Hindustani classical music and Carnatic classical music Together never existed both. There was one person though who made both the music very popular. Some of you may know the name, some of you, most of you may not know the name. His name is Khan Sahib Abdul Karim Khan. He was an extraordinarily blessed man who was developing both Hindustani classical music and then, uh, which is the other one? Uh, other one I mentioned. Uh, the, the, huh? Hindustani as against Carnatic, Carnatic classical music. There are so many people here, you know, even in DFW in these days, developing either Hindustani music or Carnatic music. Both of them don't exist. But then in uh, uh, Khan Sahib, we will call him Khan Sahib. Khan Sahib had an extremely sweet voice, and he had learnt and he had attained mastery over so many musical instruments. He had a very nice sweet voice, one of the sweetest voices in those days in India and therefore wherever he went there used to be a large following and then the following heard him until 2 a.m., 3 a.m. the entire night. That is the, uh, uh, that is the fame of this uh, Khan Sahib. In 1914, we were in 1911, right? With the previous story. Now it is 1914. Booty, along with some other devotees, was present at Khan Sahib's public concert in a place called uh, Amalnar. So he was there in Amalnar. There was one devotee, Pratap Sahib of Amalnar. And uh, at, the in, at, in, at this invitation, Khan Sahib decided to cancel all the trip to Malegaon and then uh, the other, uh, this thing, uh, what is that, Rahata, Malegaon, Neemgaon, and all the places surrounding the Shirdi hamlet. And uh, he wanted to go to Shirdi Strait to get the blessings of Shirdi Baba. Why did he do that? Did he not know that is this a mad fakir? That was before 1891. Now it is 1914. In 1914, his fame had crossed the entire Maharashtra. It had come down to South India and to some, some places in North India. In Maharashtra, everybody used to talk, everybody used to have his picture in those days. So, he wanted to see, Khan Sahib really wanted to become probably even better in singing, better in instrumentation, and he also, all, always respected and revered the holy men like Shirdi Baba. Therefore, from Amalnar, where he did a concert, all these uh, three, four people went straight, and uh, uh, Mr. Khan Sahib had a big team. Usually it is about 15 to 20 people. So he all went there, and then they were camping in the veranda of another most famous man, Tatya Kote Patil. You all know Tatya, right? Kote Patil. So he had a small veranda. In that veranda, some people were occupied and then some other people in Sate Vada, right in front of Gurusthan, right? Sate Vada, some people were there. Sate Vada had a first floor also. So they were all staying there. And then the bhajan party gathered the evening before the masjid. In the bhajan party, Baba had a same, his own bhajan party. He used to visit uh, once a week on uh, weekends. So, the bhajan party came, one of them was uh, Khan Sahib. Khan Sahib had his own people of 15 to 20 people, I said, right? 15 to 20 people who used to sing and uh, uh, play on instruments. So, they started uh, that day, Marathi bhajan. Baba was present there. To the accompaniment of all the instruments of the bhajan party of the Shirdi, uh, Khan Sahib started singing. Uh, Hechi Dana Dega Deva. Hechi Dana Dega Deva. Okay, make me more popular. Dana Dega. I want to become rich. Therefore, this is uh, riches in the sense, not money, rich in the spiritual sense. This is one of the abhangs sung by, originally sung by Tukaram. 
Tukaram being very famous, you all know. So he started singing in Pilu Raga. Pilu Raga is meant for evening and therefore is very popular. Baba was listening to that entire thing with rapt attention. He closed his eyes and he was enjoying, he was clapping his hands. And when he sang with intense devotion, Baba liked him very much. And at the end, Baba opened his eyes and said, Ah, how well he sang. He is so praying that one feels like granting his prayer. The exact words in Mar Marathi, he said. One feels like, you know, one, one becomes one with the Khan Sahib because this Pilu Raga is very famous. He used to like all these Ragas, Shedi Baba. And therefore, he said the performance was so nice and the Aarti started after that, a little bit delayed because of Khan Sahib's program. And uh, he called the Khan Sahib after that. Remember, he's one of the most prominent visitors to Sai Darbar those days. He called him and said, Aray, my dear brother, you are not leaving any time soon. He had lots of concerts in Pune, Thane and Mumbai and other places on the, on the east of uh, Shirdi. He wanted to go there. And therefore, when Baba said, you are not going away soon, do not worry about your home. Everything will be well. Baba foresees the future, right? All the time. There are thousands of examples in uh, in all the books of Narasimha Samji and all, his, uh, all the literature available today. So he said, he was looking into the future and said, everything will be all right, you don't worry. The next day, Khan Sahib received a telegram saying from his wife, Tehera. Tehera, in books it says, Tehera can be said as Tarabai. So I'll say as Miss, Mrs. Tehera. Mrs. Tehera said, sent a telegram saying, Gulbagavali, our daughter is very sick, please return immediately. He said that. So that telegram was uh, shown to Shridi Baba. It was exactly shown and the Shama was reading the telegram. And Baba said, no worries, nothing is going to happen. Call your entire family to Shirdi, including Gulbagavali and uh, your wife, Tahira. Everybody should come to Shirdi. And therefore, two persons were sent by Khan Sahib to bring his family from Pune. His mind was always in Pune because daughter is not doing well. And then in two days they all came there. Baba gave a concoction of uh, what? Uh, mm, a piece of jaggery, sacred ash, that is the udi. Udi with a small piece of jaggery and then uh, uh, also he added uh, Mm, some woody with uh, tirtha, holy water with these two things. Baba just put some in uh, Gulbagavali's mouth and then the very next day, after about 48 hours, the very next day after two days, she became very normal and no fever, nothing. And uh, Khan Sahib was watching all these things and uh, wondering, we have come to the right place and uh, this fakir has got lots of uh, power over human beings and therefore he was uh, very, very impressed. So was Tahira, Mrs. Tahira. She sang the next day a song uh, that was uh, uh, in uh, Raga Bhairavi because she sang the morning next day. On the seventh day, she sang ten days. Baba asked him to wait on the seventh day. Tahira is singing, Galing Lotangana Vandin Charana. I obey your feet. In Raga Bhairavi, Baba was very, very impressed. And therefore, Baba said, don't go for another three days. And therefore, on the ninth day, at the night, Baba called Kote Patil and said, you have taken care of this family for eight days. Watch this. He said, very generously, you are taking care. And therefore, on the ninth day, tomorrow they are leaving. And therefore, tomorrow, tonight, we will have a huge concert in Shirdi. All villagers will be called, all the famous people of Thane, Mumbai, Pune, uh, and all those uh, people, Neemgaon, and, uh, you know, Rahata. All these people you call, and everybody will be listening to what? Khan Sahib, right? Khan Sahib, Khan Sahib is concerned on the ninth day, because after ten days he was about to leave uh, Baba's order, and therefore everybody was brought, and uh, the abanga that Khan Sahib uh, sang that day was, our nahi kachu kam ki, me varosa teri ram ki. Some of you know this language. Our nahi kachu kam ki, me varosa teri ram ki. I always believe in uh, your ram. 
and therefore there is nothing nothing more kachu kam ki there is nothing less in my life because i believe in your ram you are my ram finally in the song it says you are my ram and therefore i come here gul bagavali the daughter was also listening and they were very happy this particular concert went up to 2 am in the literature authentic literature on shirdi baba diaries they say 2 am and therefore after 2 am baba stood up like the us congress and the president is addressing state of the union right he stood up and everybody stood up that's natural right and he was applauding the great concert of uh, khan sahab and then he said he gave udi and uh, other uh, other things and then he also gave 5 rupees to mrs tahera and said keep this 5 rupees in a box do not spend it that will bring you fame and fortune to you and your husband 5 rupees and he gave 1 rupee to our khan sahib and said to keep the 1 rupee not in a box not in a pooja room keep it in your pocket all the time baba used to keep money in his pocket right like the nine coins of lakshmi bai shinde in the final moments keep this 1 rupee in your pocket he told the khan sahib and khan sahib kept that all his life and very few people do not know in india of this abdul karim khan he is such a noble soul who was very close to shirdi sai prominent visitors to sai darbar can say more because each and every one of you sitting here and not sitting here have gone to shirdi at least once some of you have gone 100 times 50 times 12 times mama you all would have witnessed some doing performance by shirdi baba even though he is not living in his physical body he is now living as we all believe everybody in the world who know shirdi baba believe he is living in his astral body that is how he appears before you from the dwarak mai picture he appears on the wall of dwarak mai remember wall of dwarak mai on the one side on the other side when you enter baba appeared on the wall it's still there they have garlanding i'm told shirdi baba's famous devotees i will include all of you in that list some of you will become very prominent devotees right some of you may end up chief surgeon general some of you will become a very very famous uh, pediatrician neurosurgeon making 5 million dollars a year the money doesn't matter baba will make you very prominent means you would have known shirdi baba fully and therefore by knowing shirdi baba fully your blessings will increase your chase bank account or wells fargo account will increase later on that is a sequel to your blessings account punya your punya will increase again the same bank right any bank punya account increases you become a successful person without any worries anxiety most of us have anxieties in the world right so these people like child varlakshmi's mother was so happy when she came back and spoke the entire agraharam in kumbakonam in 1942 is very happy to see that uh, young girl talk sing right i don't know what became of her because history nobody maintained diary on miss varlakshmi or mr mani professor narke built a bungalow right before 1918 and then he became famous in pune the bungalow reportedly is still there r b purandare built a beautiful home in one month is a record Jyotindra Ramachandran Tharkad, prominent visitor, along with his father, you know his father's name, Sita Devi, mother's name. They are living today in your hearts. Similarly, some of the prominent people who are building Shirdi Baba's temples are here. They will also become very prominent. Baba will give them extraordinary achievement in their academic area, in their profession. I see that. Only thing is, I don't, I lack time to explain. some of you have achieved higher degrees some of you have achieved professional sta- status some of you have got promotions so many people have reported to me that they all had promotion mama and therefore the visitors to sai darbar become prominent and the prominent visitors to sai doing you know janana manana all these things they become more famous 
famous in the sense you will come to know shirdi baba more that is what is famous that is what is uh, more prosperous that is what is more healthy of course all these things will follow once you know shirdi baba well thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about some uh, prominent visitors to sai darbar before 1918 Uh, please let's have a few minutes in which time we will prepare ourselves for the dwarkamai puja let's now turn our attention uh, for which you all came the ashtotra namavali which is very powerful all those who mention this will of course receive his blessings a plenty om shri sai om shri sai shri sai nadaya namaha ओम श्री साई लक्ष्मी नारायण नम ओम श्री साई कृष्ण राम शिव मारुति रूपाय नम ओम श्री साई शेष साई ने नम ओम श्री साई गोदावरी तट शिलाने नम ओम श्री साई भक्त हृदय लाय नम ओम श्री साई सर्वहृदयवासिने नम ओम श्री साई बूधवासाय नम ओम श्री साई बूध भविष्य पापवर्जिताय नम ओम श्री साई कालतीताय नम ओम श्री साई काल कालाय नम ओम श्री साई कालाय नम ओम श्री साई काल दर्प दमनाय नम ओम श्री साई मृत्युंजयाय नम ओम श्री साई अमर्त्याय नम ओम श्री साई मर्त्य अभय प्रदाय नम ओम श्री साई जीवदार्याय नम ओम श्री साई जीवदार्याय नम ओम श्री साई सर्वदाराय नम ओम श्री साई भक्तावन समर्थाय नम ओम श्री साई अन्नवस्त्रदाय नम ओम श्री साई आरोग्यक्षेमदाय नम ओम श्री साई धन मंगल्य प्रदाय नम ओम श्री साई रिद्धि सिद्धिदाय नम ओम श्री साई पुत्र मित्र कलत्र बंधुदाय नम ओम श्री साई योगक्षेम वहाय नम ओम श्री साई आपदाधवाय नम ओम श्री साई मार्ग बंधवे नम ओम श्री साई भुक्ति मुक्ति सर्व स्वर्ग पवर्गदाय नम ओम श्री साई भुक्ति मुक्ति स्वर्ग पवर्गदाय नम ओम श्री साई प्रियाय नम ओम श्री साई प्रियाय नम ओम श्री साई प्रीतिवर्धनाय नम 
ओम श्री साई अंतर्यामी ने नम ओम श्री साई निनंदय नम ओम श्री साई सचिदात्म नम ओम श्री साई परम सुगताय नम ओम श्री साई परमेश्वराय नम ओम श्री साई परब्रह्म ने नम ओम श्री साई परमात्म ने नम ओम श्री साई ज्ञानस्वरूपिने नम ओम श्री साई जगद पितेय नम ओम श्री साई भक्तातृदातृपितामहाय नम ओम श्री साई पितामहाय नम ओम श्री साई भक्त अभय प्रदा नम ओम श्री साई भक्त पारादीनाय नम ओम श्री साई ज्ञानस्वरूपिने नम ओम श्री साई भक्त अनुग्रह कातराय नम ओम श्री साई शरणागत वत्सलाय नम ओम श्री साई भक्ति शक्ति प्रदा नम ओम श्री साई ज्ञान वैराग्यदाय नम ओम श्री साई प्रेम प्रदा नम ओम श्री साई संशय हृदय दौर्बल्य पापकर्म वासन क्षयकय नम ओम श्री साई हृदय ग्रंथि भेद गाय नम ओम श्री साई कर्मध्वंसिने नम ओम श्री साई सुत सस्वस्तिदाय नम ओम श्री साई अनंत कल्याण गुणाय नम ओम श्री साई गुणादित गुणात्मने नम ओम श्री साई अमित पराक्रमाय नम ओम श्री साई अमित पराक्रमाय नम ओम श्री साई अमित पराक्रमाय नम ओम श्री साई जयिने नम दुर्दर्शाशोभाय नम ओम श्री साई अपराजिताय नम ओम श्री साई त्रिलेकेशु अभिगत गात ये नम ओम श्री साई असाख्यरिदाय नम ओम श्री साई सर्वशक्तिमूर्त नम ओम श्री साई स्वरूपसुंदराय नम ओम श्री साई सुलोशनाय नम ओम श्री साई सुलोक्षनाय नम ओम श्री साई बहिर्भ विश्वमूर्त नम ओम श्री साई अरुभाव्यक्ताय नम ओम श्री साई अशिताय नम ओम श्री साई सूष्माय नम ओम श्री साई सूष्माय नम सर्वंतरियामिने नम ओम श्री साई सर्वंतरियामिनी नम ओम श्री साई मनोवागतीताय नम ओम श्री साई प्रेमूर्त नम ओम श्री साई सुलभदुर्लभाय नम ओम श्री साई असहाय सहायाय नम ओम श्री साई अनादनाथ दीनबंधवे नम ओम श्री साई सर्वारातुते नम ओम श्री साई अकर्मानेक कर्म सुकर्मिने नम ओम श्री साई अकर्मानेक कर्म सुकर्मिने नम ओम श्री साई तीर्थाय नम ओम श्री साई पुण्यश्रवण कीर्तनाय नम ओम श्री साई वासुदेवाय नम ओम श्री साई सता गतये नम ओम श्री साई सत्पारायणा नम ओम श्री साई सिद्धेश्वराय नम 
ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಲೋಗನಾದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಬಾವನ ನಾಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಅಮೃತಾಂಸವೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಅಮೃತಾಂಸವೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಭಾಸ್ಕರ ಪ್ರಭಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚರ್ಯ ತಪಸ್ಸರ್ಯಾದಿ ಸುವ್ರತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸತ್ಯಧರ್ಮ ಪಾರಾಯಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಿದ್ಧೇಶ್ವರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಸಂಕಲ್ಪಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಯೋಗೇಶ್ವರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಭಗವತೆ ನಮಃ ಭಕ್ತವತ್ಸಲಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸತ್ಪುರುಷಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸತ್ಯದತ್ವ ಬೋಧಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಕಾಮಾದಿ ಸದ್ವೈರಿ ಧ್ವಂಸಿನೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಅಭೇದ ನಂದಾನುಭವ ಪ್ರಭಾಯ ನಮಃ ಅಭೇದ ನಂದಾನುಭವ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಮ ಸರ್ವಮತ ಸಮ್ಮತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಯೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ವೆಂಕಟೇಶರಮಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ವೆಂಕಟೇಶರಮಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ವೆಂಕಟೇಶರಮಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ಅದ್ಭುತಾನಂದ ಚರ್ಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಪ್ರಭನ್ನಾರ್ತಿ ಹರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಪ್ರಭನ್ನಾರ್ತಿ ಹರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸರ್ವ ದುಃಖ ಕ್ಷಯಕರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸರ್ವ ದುಃಖ ಕ್ಷಯಕರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸಂಸಾರ ಸರ್ವ ದುಃಖ ಕ್ಷಯಕರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸರ್ವವಿತ್ ಸರ್ವತೋಮುಖಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸರ್ವಾಂತರ್ಬಹಿಸ್ಥಿತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸರ್ವಮಂಗಳಗರಾಯ 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 ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸರ್ವಾಭೀಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸರ್ವಮಂಗಳಗರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಮರಸ ಷಣ್ಮಾರ್ಗಸ್ಥಾಪನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಮರ್ಥ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಸಾಯಿ ನಾದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಮರ್ಥ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಸಾಯಿ ನಾದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಸಾಯಿ ನಾದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಅನಂತ ಕೋಟಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಂಡ ನಾಯಕ ರಾಜಾಧಿರಾಜ ಯೋಗಿರಾಜ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಸಾಯಿನಾಥ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಕಿ ಜೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಾಯಿನಾಥ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಕಿ ಜೇ